uh, presentation is Honorable Kadi Aminu Sahad. Kadi Aminu Sahad is a graduate of Sharia Department Faculty of Law, University of Maiduguri in the year 1998. He went to the Nigerian Law School, Buari, in 2000. He served in a law firm of Aud Musa and Co as a private legal practitioner in Maiduguri, Borno State in 2010. Or till 2010, Aminu Sahad was appointed Kadi of Sharia Court of Appeal, Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, by late Umar Musa Yara Dua in 2009. He was appointed as a judge to Gambia Sharia Court, and this made him among the first Sharia Court judges appointed to serve in foreign countries. He served in Imo State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal in 2019. He also served in Cross River State, I mean State and National, Assemb uh, uh, National Assembly Election Petition Tribunal in 2022. The presiding judge for Center of Alternative Dispute Resolution of Sharia Court of Appeal, Federal Capital Territory. He is presently the Imam of Sharia Court of Appeal, Jumat Mosque, Gudu, and he is happily married. May I also say proudly that San Aminu Saad, Kadi Aminu Saad, has been a wonderful Mulan member since I know him until date, even that he's a Kadi of Sharia Court of Appeal. Mulan is proud of him. May I call on Kadi Amin Saad to go onto the podium for his presentation. Thank you, sir. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ash-shrafi al-mursalin. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My Lord, the Honorable Chief Judge, Chief Judge of Niger State, my lords here present, my brothers, the speakers, moderator, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, let me start with saying that there are things that are unanimous among all the scholars here and the scholars we caught in various jurisprudential school of thought. The unanimous issue is that there is no direct or indirect, yes, I say indirect, a provision from the Quran or the Sunnah prohibiting appointing a female as a Sharia court judge. That's none. And also, unanimously, ulama agree that anything that is not prohibited by the Holy Quran or by the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's left to the Ummah to discuss and see the best to choose. That's Masail al Ijtihad. And they used to say, La inkara fi Masail al Ijtihad. You don't condemn, you don't attack any procedure that was adopted as a result of Ijtihad. So may I adopt? the presentation of my Lord, the Chief Judge of Niger State, and also respectfully adopt all the speakers submission regarding the verses that's the cornerstone of those scholars who says women cannot be appointed a judge. The moderator keep on saying those against and those in favor. There's nothing against. Those that say 
women cannot be appointed a judge. They are just merely expressing their own opinion. So also others do express their own opinion. There's nothing against. Look at the authorities relied on. Those that are said women cannot be a judge. Look at the authorities they relied on. First, the hadith that's been discussed since morning, hadith Abu Bakr. Then the, the verse of Surah Tunisa 34 and other verses. But a primary student of Usul al Fiqh would tell you that this is a Qiyas Ma'al Fariq. It's an analogy with a wide and very big difference. So scholars have explained a lot about it. But centrally, let us look at how God Almighty addresses the two gender. He said, Wal mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'aduhum awliya u ba'ad ya'amaruna bil ma'arufi wa nahawna anil munkar wa yuqimuna salah wa yutuna zakah wa yuti'una Allah wa rasoolah ulaika sayarhamuhumullah inna Allah azizun hakim the believers, both men and women are guardians of one another. They encourage good and forbid evil, establish prayer and pay arms, and obey Allah and his messenger. It is they who will be shown Allah's mercy. Allah, surely Allah is almighty, all wise. And he says in Surah Al-Ahzab, Inna al-Muslimina wal-Muslimati wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minati وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ وَالْخَاشِئِينَ وَالْخَاشِئَاتِ وَالْمُتَسَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُتَسَدِّقَاتِ وَالسَّائِمِينَ وَالسَّائِمَاتِ وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُوجَهُمْ وَالْحَافِظَاتِ وَالزَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالزَّاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah says, surely for Muslim men and women, believing men and women, devout men and women, truthful men and women, patient men and women, humble men and women, charitable men and women, fasting men and women, men and women who guard their chastity, and men and women who remember Allah. Often for all of them, Allah has prepared forgiveness and a great reward. The Quran describes place of honor and equality for men and women. There are instances where men and women are treated as equal in religious duties and reward. For instance, when Allah mentioned, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu taqullah wa aminu bi rasuli. He said, O you who believe, fear Allah and believe in his messenger. In a similar vein, Allah refers to both men and women in equality as human beings and offsprings of Adam alayhi salam in several verses. For example, he says, Ya ayyuhan nasu, inna khalaknakum min zakarin wa unsa wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. O mankind, we created you from a fear of a male and a female and made you on the nation and, and tribes. And he says, wa lakat karramna bani adama we have honored the sons of Adam and provided them with transport on land and sea. Almighty Allah also equalized the position of men and women in making supplication to him in verse 193, Surah to Ali Imran. Allah says, Rabbana innana sami'na munadiyan yunadi lil iman and aminu rabbikum fa'amanna. رَبَّنَا فَكْفِرْ لَنَا زُنُوبَنَا وَكَفِّرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ رَبَّنَا وَآتِنَا مَا وَأَتَّنَا عَلَى رُسُلِكُ وَلَا تُخْزِنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah says, O oh, oh our Lord, we have heard the call of the one of one calling us to faith, who says, believe in your Lord and believe. Our Lord, forgive us our sins, blot out from us our iniquities. 
and take to ourselves our souls in the company of the righteous one. Our Lord grant us what you promise us through your messengers and save us from shame on the day of judgment for you never remain on your promises. Allah answered them in unison as follows. فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا أُضِيءُ عَمَلَ آمِنٍ مِّنْكُمْ مِّنْ زَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْسَى بَعْضُكُمْ مِّنْ بَعْضٍ And their Lord accepted and answered them, Never will I dishonor the good works of any of you, either male or female, as you are members one of another. Surah to Ali Imran. There is no significant debate among scholars on this matter. However, when it comes to leadership issue, there are quite striking differences of opinion. This distinction had not yet emerged in classical era because of the development, because of the tradition and culture of that time. Then we look at the verse, Surah Nisa, and the Hadith. The speakers has spoke well about the various opinions expressed by scholars. Here in Nigeria, as you all know, our courts were enjoined to follow Maliki law. What most of our people stick to is that Maliki prohibit appointing a female to the office of a judge. And they stop there. To me, this is really unfair to Maliki school because the second in command in Malikiya is Ibn al-Qasim. And all Malikiya accepted Ibn al-Qasim as the second in command. He stayed with Imam Malik for more than 20 years. And he, in his own personality and knowledge, some equated him with Imam Malik. He too is a knowledgeable and he can form a man's heart. But due to humility, he stand with Malikiya. But he says, and one of the books that relied on by Malikis is Muhtasar Khalil. Muhtasar Khalil is a book that all Malikis relied and rallied around. In that book, they quoted Ibn al-Qasim saying, وروي عن أبي مريم عن ابن القاسم جواز ولاية المرأة وقال ابن عرفة قال ابن زرقون أظنه فيما تجوز شهادتها قال ابن عبد السلام لا حاجة لهذا التعويل لاحتمال أن يكون ابن القاسم قال كقول الحسن البصري والطبري بإزالة ولاية القضاء مطلقا You can see مواهب الجليل The translation goes loosely ابن أبي مريم said on the authority of Ibn al-Qasim, that is permissible for a woman to assume judgeship. Ibn Arafa said, Ibn Zarqun said, I think that Ibn al-Qasim men, women may judge in those matters where their testimony is valid. Ibn Abdul Salam said, there's no proof of this interpretation. It may be that Ibn al-Qasim doctrine was like that of Hassan al-Basari and al-Tabari in allowing women the authority to judge without the restriction. This is in Malikia. So if you are saying Malikia prohibit, then just mention those prohibits because there are some in Malikia that says a woman can be a judge. Not only a judge in a, in a, in a cases that she can testify. I will come to the issue of tes testimony of women, but Malikia, they have that view that woman can be a judge. In another book by prominent Maliki scholar, Ibn Rushid, he said in Bidat al Mujtahid, Wakazalika ikhtalafu fi ishrati al Zukura, Kala al Jamhur, he a sharpun fi sihat al Hukum, Wakala Abu Hanifa, he a Jews and Takun al Mara Kadian. So Ibn al Rushid, he too. He made mention of Imam Tabari. He made mention of Abu Hanifa. And he is of the view that women can be a judge. You can look at Bidatul Mushahid, Wainahatul Muqtazid for 
uh, of uh, Ibn Rushul. Then the issue of testimony, it raised a lot of concern and people are making a lot of issues regarding it. Why a woman testimony is half of a, a, a man. This issue, Ibn al-Qayyim al make a very good remarks. And it's very important for lawyers and judges to look at that, his book, at Hukumiya. He said, the Quran did not mention the two witnesses or one man and a woman in reference to administration of justice, which the judge does in the court of law, but it mentioned those two scenarios of witnesses in reference to different ways of protecting the right of individual in monetary transaction. Then he quoted his Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah is saying, after narrating what the bar says in Baqarah, chapter two, chapter two, verse 282, and he analyzes it, he says, Allah protects the rights of individual by asking the parties to document their commercial transaction and command the beneficiary of the loan to dictate the terms of the transaction. And if the beneficiary is unable to dictate, then his guardian or representative should dictate. Next, the lender is commanded to commit the two male witnesses or one male witness and two female witnesses to attest to the transaction. Next, he almighty forbid the witnesses from refusing to come forward when called upon. Then he then permit the parties not to write in the case of unspot transaction among them if they so wish. Then he command them to have witnesses when they, so, when they sell to one another. Then he command them that if they are on a journey and can find a scrap, then pledge of possession in Leo is acceptable. All these all this are advisory statement as well as for teaching and general guidance on how business partners can protect their rights, their commercial products. Surely the process of determining a case in court transcends beyond bringing two male witnesses or one male and two female witnesses. You can look at Aturukul Hukumiya, page 81 to 82. Ibn al-Qayyim here emphasized that the Quran text speaks in language of persuasion and preference mustahab and not in the manner of lying down a decisive injunction of law. The text in the word does not preclude possibility of one woman acting as witnesses or woman being witness in a case without there being any male witness. Ibn al-Qayyim says, وَقَوْلُهُ أَلْبَيِّنَ عَلَى الْمُدَّعِي وَالْيَمِينُ عَلَى مَنْ أَنْكَرَ أَلْبَيِّنَةُ فِي كَلَامِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَكَلَامُ الصَّحَابَةِ إِسْمٌ لِكُلِّ مَا يُبَيِّنُ الْحَقِّ فَهِيَ عَمُّ مِنَ الْبَيِّنَةِ فِي إِسْطِلَاهِ الْفُقْهَاءِ حَيْثُ خَصُّوهَا بِالشَّاهِدَيْنِ أَوْ شَاهِدْ وَالْيَمِينِ وَلَا حَرَجَ فِي الْإِسْطِلَاهِ مَا لَمْ تَدَمَّنْ حَمْلُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ عَلَى غَيْرِ مَحْمَلِهِ So the issue of relying on the verse of the Holy Quran that provide the testimony of two male, one male, two male, or two female with one male should not be considered as a barrier for appointing a female as a judge of Sharia court. Because what Sheikh Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn Taymiyyah are saying is that there is difference between al-ishhad wa shahada. In that verse, Allah is talking about documentary evidence, attestation, which is completely different from giving evidence before the court. Documentary evidence and attestation is completely different. So what the Islamic law emphasizes 
is al bayina proof. If you come to court, if you have anything to prove your case, nobody will say no. You should go away because you are not complying with the Quran chapter two verse two eight two. So al bayina it can take a lot of form, not only two witnesses and uh, one male witness and, uh, and, and two female witnesses. So that one should not be considered as a barrier. Then quickly, let me take women in other society and see why some people are criticizing us. I said, the assumption of male superiority is not limited to Muslim context. The French Revolution of 1889 was said to be a cat catalyst spring political and legal changes, not in France and Europe, but also in the Middle East. However, the idea of French Revolution was negligible, in fact, on the existing notion of femininity and masculinity that existed throughout Europe. For example, the French women were excluded from active citizenship after the revolution. It was made clear that the proper place was in the home where their proper place was in the home where they had to devote their time and energy to being good mothers and housewives. In 1793, women were banished from public life. Throughout 18th and 19th century, women appearance in public was often equated with immorality. At the same time, educational reform at the same time, although throughout the 18th and 19th century, women appearance in public was often equated with immorality. The Napoleonic Civil Court of 1804 reflected those sentiments to a great extent. The same court gave husband, husband full legal authority over his wife. Her property and her children, Article 1124 said that married women together with infants and persons of unsound mind were expressly declared incapable of settling contract. This code was widely adopted throughout Europe. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, I deliberately escaped the issue of fatwa uh, of Sheikh Ibrahim Saleh because the professors have spoke well about it. Sheikh have made a fatwa in 2010, that women can assume leadership because the hadith of Abu Bakr is talking about great imama, that is supreme leader, where there is no national assembly, there is no uh, legislature, there is no uh, the third arm of government judiciary. The great imama is a leader that combines all this arm of government. So today, that system of government is not obtainable. So there's no need to cite this hadith. We know Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, the great commentary of Imam Sahih Bukhari, he has 52 female shiur. He learned from them. And one of the great scholar of hadith, Karima Mirzawiya. She has a, a chair in Haram teaching Sahih Bukhari. And scholars of Hadith regarded Karima as one of the great scholars of Hadith because of her chain of transmission is the one that is most authentic. So there is no need, some, some may say a lot because they just come to know about it now, but it is there in our books. Those scholars that express opinion is an opinion. And whenever opinion is expressed, then that opinion must succumb to the changes of situation, change in culture, change in tradition, change in situations. Once fatwa taghayyar bi taghayyuri zamani wal hali wal urf. Once those uh, factors change, society change, uh, uh, culture change, tradition change, things change, the empathy must change. The challenge now is with our mothers. No, Nigerian constitution did not provide that for a Sharia court judge to be appointed, it must be a male. There's no, no, no that criteria at all. 
so also area code routes. None is you know, stipulated that a, a, a judge of area code or a sharia code must be a male. So come forward. If you want to be a judge of sharia court appeal, now the issue is uh, NJC will conduct interview and they will call for, for nomination, get your nomination, get the knowledge. Once you have the knowledge, you are capable to hold that office, you are always welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Thank you so very much. Uh, uh, that has been Kadi Amin Sahad, the Kadi of Sharia Court of Appeal, Federal Capital Territory. He finally crowned it all by putting a challenge to the female learned uh, colleagues to come on board and contest or apply for this uh, position. Perhaps you will be putting it on trial to see what happened, whether or not you can be denied, and if denied, on what ground? Uh, I think uh, that is what uh, Honorable Kadi has uh, just said. Having said that, we thank you so very much for the presentation and uh, for keeping to the time.